I grew up in Pontiac, Michigan, a working class town with, uh, at the time, three General Motors plants, GM Truck and Coach, Fisher Body, Pontiac Motors. My parents were both immigrants. Uh, they were actually both refugees. My father was born in Minsk and was brought here by his family as a child to escape the pogroms of Eastern Europe. Uh, my mother came here on the second Liberty ship that brought refugees from Europe and actually the only Jew from her town who survived the war. On this corner, where it says for lease used to be a restaurant and I washed dishes in that restaurant. And my father's office was in this building. I think growing up in the 50s, in many respects, is very different than growing up today. We were completely unscheduled. I recall getting on my bike in the summer in the morning with my baseball mitt, riding down to the park and seeing what other kids were there. Then we'd agree to go to somebody's house for lunch, and then we'd go out and we'd play some more. I remember going to my first baseball game at Tiger Stadium. I couldn't believe how green the grass was. What we did is that we went into the courtyard and there was a fire escape or something that we went up and we were running around on the roof. Now, I didn't get suspended, but they did call my parents and they were not happy. Both my parents were very principled people. I'm my father's son in the sense that he was an Eagle Scout, I became an Eagle Scout. He played tennis, I played tennis. He was a ham radio operator, I became a ham radio operator. But I'm also my mother's son in that I think I have more of her disposition. My mother was very much a, a, a people person. We had a neighbor who was a manufacturer's representative. And I would go around to men's stores and take inventory for him. So I literally counted pants. Pontiac has fallen on really hard times. When I was growing up, it was a relatively prosperous place. You could graduate from Pontiac Central High School on a Friday and go to work in one of the automobile factories on a Monday and pretty much be guaranteed a comfortable middle-class existence. Sadly, uh, most of those jobs are no longer there. And as a result, Pontiac has become one of the poorest towns, if not the poorest city, in the state of Michigan. I wanted to go back and meet with kids uh, growing up in Pontiac today and tell them that if they work hard, they can have a great life and great opportunities uh, ahead of them. I never could have imagined this life for me when I was growing up in Pontiac. Literally, I would come down here to play tennis. That's the job. It's great to be home. Please welcome Harvard University President Larry Bacon. This is the first visit I've really taken as president of Harvard, and once I was named, I said I wanted to come home. While he was taking the tour with the students, I was in the back and one of the students came up to me that wasn't a part of the tour and she said, man, this is as close as I'm ever gonna get to Harvard. Immediately my heart sunk for a second and I <laughs> pushed her right up to the front and said, well, now you're closer. Now what are you gonna do for the rest of it? They had a bulletin board which had the logos of a bunch of different colleges and universities. I stopped in front of it because Harvard was represented and a group of students were gathered around us and one of them said to me, your being here is the closest that I will ever get to Harvard. And I said, no, it's not. You know, if you work hard uh, and apply yourself, you too can go to Harvard. And I think that all of us need people who can see things in us that we don't necessarily see in ourselves. The thing about our robot team is kind of like, we kind of push them into colleges. So, and wow, they, are you guys heroes within the school? I mean, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I plan to apply to Harvard just to see if I'll get in, just hoping. I've heard from a lot of teachers that I'm that I have the capabilities to get into there and seeing that he's from Pontiac and I'm from Pontiac, we're coming from the same place. And a lot of their families have not been to college before, so they would be the first generation in their family to attend college, which is such a huge deal. And they recognize the role that they have in their family's legacy. It was really cool meeting him uh, once in a lifetime. Well, not once in a lifetime if I get into Harvard, but you know. <laughs> When I reflect upon my parents' journey to this country, I realize how lucky I am. Where else can one go in one generation from off the boat with literally nothing to enjoy the kind of life and opportunity that I and my family have been fortunate to enjoy? It was higher education that made this all possible. These are tough times for higher education, and I think people are raising 
hard and challenging questions, whether or not college and universities are even affordable to the middle class, about whether or not we are connected to the, the heartland of this country, about whether or not we are worthy of public support. My late father was able to attend Wayne State University. He went at night. He put himself through school by doing a series of odd jobs, parking cars and other things. And because my father was able to get an education, I had a different life, my sister had a different life. And because we were able to have an education, our children have had a different life. Higher education has the capacity to change the life and the trajectory, not just of the person who gets educated, but in many cases for future generations as well.